Hi everybody. Before this episode gets started, I'd just like to remind you that there's just a few episodes left here in Season 3 of Rappin' Outdoors 360. Now, after a short break, Rappin' Outdoors 360 Season 4 will be coming your way with its first episodes sometime near the end of April 2022. Now, I wanted to thank everybody, all my subscribers and all my viewers for the first three seasons of all your support and having me get to 300 plus subscribers. It's really appreciated. Now I'm going to set another goal on subscribership for season four. By the end of season four, my goal is to try to get to 500 subscribers and maybe even a little more. So make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, and share. Now in season four, we're still going to continue with our gift giveaways as we started here in season three. Many more big giveaways to be coming. So if you're not subscribed, get yourself subscribed, join in on the fun, and be eligible for the upcoming gift giveaways. Now, speaking of gift giveaways, just wanted to remind everybody that the Season 3 Big $200 Value Hunting Gift Giveaway is still in progress. So, if you're not yet a subscriber, get yourself subscribed. Go back, check out those gift giveaway videos to find out exactly what's in this $200 valued package and what you need to do to get yourself involved in a chance to win it. Now, let's get this video started. Well, it's uh, Saturday morning. I leave tomorrow for my five-day bow hunt in central Wisconsin. I came down here. Our park system in Milwaukee County has archery ranges, and I figured, hey, you know, this is the weekend before gun deer season opens up. Everybody's going to be out bow hunting this weekend. I should be able to come down here Saturday morning and, you know, just sight in the crossbow, make sure everything is tuned and ready to go so that when I show up, I can just walk out and have confidence in where that arrow is going to go and I don't have to waste time up by my brother-in-law sighting in the bow. Well, I pulled in and um, take a look. I pulled in, we had a ton of cars and trucks and all four of the bales are taken. Everybody's shooting today. We uh, had a guy down here, and the other guy from this bale is talking to him. This guy just got here, set up and shooting, and uh, we got two guys over here shooting. So, so it looks like I'm leaving a little earlier than planned tomorrow. So I've got daylight time, so I can sight in my bow by my brother-in-law. So I'm ready to go on Monday morning. So, all right, well, I stuck around long enough. Um, one of the lanes opened up. In fact, now that I'm shooting, uh, there's just me and another gentleman here. Everything's open. So I sat around for a while, waited for it to open. I changed my mind. I just as soon get it done now. So when I get up north, all I got to do is unpack and get out into the blind in the woods. I'll be good to go. So we're going to sight her in now, just check her out. just a tad high, but I'm sure that's me.
All right, let's go check it out. Uh, much better. You can see the first one was high. Next two are dead center at 20 yards. We'll check her out at 30 now. We're gonna move back here, we'll range it in at 30, we'll be good to go. Be a little low. Ten. Oh no, we're right there. We're good. A couple more shots. We should be good right there. Check those out. All right, not a bad grouping from 30 yards. I'm pretty satisfied with that. We're dialed in at 20 and 30. The food plot ain't more than 50 yards across from the blind. I'm not going to take a shot at more than 30, 35 yards, anyways. Um, that's just my personal etiquette. I want to make sure. I get a good clean kill and I don't wound a deer where I can't find it. So uh, I'm satisfied with my groupings at 20 and 30. We'll see you up north tomorrow. Let the hunt begin. See you guys up there. Just got off the phone with Kevin Pitzel. Uh, he called me. He's been up hunting this weekend, um, the parcel that I'm headed to right now, and he is so pumped for me. <laughs> he gave me some good intel information. Uh, after looking at his trail cams and his experience out in the woods, he missed an eight pointer yesterday. All his fault, he says. He, he says he should have should have had that deer. Anyways, he's so pumped for me. He said, looking at intel off their trail cams, there's two tens, at least two nines, possibly three, a couple of eights. He says, there's tons of buck activity on our 40 acres that we hunt up there. So he told me, he says, I wish I didn't have to go to work that I could stay up with you. So I am super pumped right now getting this latest intel out of Kevin, uh, this may be my best chance of getting a big buck. Um, I'm up here Monday through Thursday, and I'm holding out for an eight or a 10. So, uh, you know, there's never any guarantees, but it sure sounds from listening to the intel that the odds are in my favor. That's all I can hope for is having odds in my favor and being in the woods at the right time. So I'm hoping this is the time. See you guys up at the trailer. Heading in by Craig. Let's see if we see something. Talked with Kevin on the way up, gave me some current intel from this weekend in his bow hunt and he said there's a lot of bucks roaming the properties around here. He said it's amazing the amount of deer that are moving through our property. So we're just, I got the camera running just in case. It's on the dash and we're taking a slow drive in here and just kind of checking things out. Looking for deer. 
Okay, let's see if we see anything moving here on this last leg in. We still got the corn standing over here. This is this is pretty open here on the right side. I'm not seeing anything out here. Yeah, I didn't see nothing on the way in here. See if there's anything out here in the field. Yeah, I'm not seeing nothing out in the field. So, all right, we're almost there. All right, we finally got up here. It's about quarter to four. We're heading out in the woods. I still got stuff to take care of inside the trailer, but we. We got the uh, freezeable stuff in the freezers, in the refrigerator stuff in the fridge. Got my backpack packed to come out here this evening. We had snowflakes in the air a little bit. Uh, I think it's about 34, 35, 36, somewhere in there just above freezing. Anyways, we're headed out. I'm so stoked we got some really good intel from Kevin, recent intel. We got so many big bucks roaming this area out here on this acreage that we hunt. And I'm hoping that over the course of the next three and a half days, one of them will grace my presence and pass by within bow range. <laughs> Anyways, we're heading out there tonight. We're going to refresh our scrapes, our mock scrapes. Uh, put down a little bit of uh, estrus, doe estrus in the area. And uh, pick up our SD cards and check out our, our intel on our own SD cards. Check out the blind, make sure our ground blind's ready to go. Get back, settle in, and have at it early tomorrow morning. So, as you can see here, with the rain and that, a uh, little mucky and standing water. And here's another spot For the most part the trail ain't too bad though Craig said last night when I talked to him that there was still snow on the ground so that melted off this morning so <laughs> I got visions of big bucks dancing in my head, so I'm gonna get out there now. Uh, we'll see you out by the blind There it is there's a ground blind. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to head east towards our turkey blind first. I got two trail cams over there. Let's pull those SD cards first. Alright, all done here by the turkey blind. We had 45 pictures on the camera set up down the trail and 12 out of the blind itself. So, new cards are in. Let's head down to our deer blind now. Alright, there's the blind. So, oh, it's been pretty windy and gusty, but it looks like everything is held up halfway decent. But I'm curious as to what everything looks like out here. Now, that don't look too bad. With the high winds, I can see the top peeled back up there, the camel pushed back. We'll take care of that. But let's go check the scrapes, the mock scrapes out here in the food plot. See if we got any activity out here. Anything recent? Now, we had rain and everything. So it ain't going to show much if it rained and snowed. Um, can't remember if uh, 
that was like that or if this uh, was worked over some How more. about this one? This is the other mock scrape that we got here. It's uh, really hard to tell. So uh, we've got a camera over there, we've got a camera over here, and we had a camera over there. We're uh, going to get the SD cards pulled and uh, activate our scrapes again and get that done. And I've got my uh, crossbow support for shooting in my backpack. That's going to go in the blind tonight right away too. So let's get this done. Let's start pulling SD cards. That's it. So all I gotta do now is fix the camo a little bit where all these heavy wind gusts have peeled back some of the camo up there. So we just gotta straighten that out. like to push any products so I'm going to show you the back of this one but this is a uh, extra scent from three different doughs and what's unique about this and the reason I like this it's not a liquid product and it's drippy and messy if you look at this it's kind of like a roll-on stick deodorant as you can see here so what I've got now in our food plot area we've got some really low cut stumps that we haven't been able to get out of the ground here and you've heard the story about the conditions of the swamp with the water and mud and getting stuck so I'm going to utilize those by rubbing this scent on those and then up a little bit on some trees to get that scent in the air tonight the winds blowing good hopefully it'll carry the scent pretty good and again I'm, I'm not pushing products but I like this one because of the fact that I can use it like a stick deodorant, it's not liquid, it's not messy and drippy and, and everything else. So let's go get this done. Here's, what, here's one of the stumps I was telling you about. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this stick, we're going to rub it on the base of the stump really good, get a lot of it on here. Get that scent in the air. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, you saw how we spread that on this little stump. We got a couple more in this area. I'm going to do that next and get that done. You can hear that wind howling. I don't know if you can see the tree limbs up there. Got some pretty good wind gusts blowing. Get that scent in the air. Anyways, another thing you can do with that roll-on stick deodorant uh, style of application is you can put some on your boots and walk in and get that scent in the ground walking into your blind also instead of trying to drag a strip 
of scent, you know, with the liquid scent in. So, um, just another tip on why I like that roll-on stick style deodorant uh, dough estrus. Next, we're going to activate the scrape. Now we're going to get some dominant buck urine sprinkled on there. Most people just put a couple of drops on. I try to make it real. When a buck goes, he goes. He just don't sprinkle a couple of drops. So. I put down a quarter of an ounce maybe. I want to saturate it pretty good to replicate an actual buck peeing on that ground. Not just a couple drops. They go. So if you noticed, it just wasn't a couple of drops. I tipped it, it poured, it ran down the end of the bottle. We saturated that. Now we've got one more mock scrape here in the food plot area. I'm going to do that one next. All that's left is to uh, get our uh, crossbow support in the blind and we'll be all set to head back. So it took us about 45 minutes. Uh, as you can see we kind of redid the blind a little up on top. Uh, fixed that and uh, we fixed up the front a little bit with the limbs and that so we've got open shooting windows a little bit more with the wind they moved a little so uh, we're good to go and uh, let's hope uh, and big bucks come through here I'm anxious for two things to get back to the trailer one is to make myself a nice hot cup of coffee and warm up and number two get these SD cards in the computer and see what we got here one other thing I wanted to mention about my tactics is you saw how we put out the, the dough estrus and the buck urine on the scrapes. Uh, tomorrow when I get out here in the morning I'm going to use the wicks. I got two wicks. We'll dip those into the dominant buck urine. One. And the other one I'm going to scrape on that uh, deodorant stick gel. <clears throat> and we're going to hang those up in a tree so the wind catches them even more so we'll have a dominant buck scent going out and we'll have that triple doe estrus going out at a higher level so that'll be in the morning the one thing that I didn't notice here in the soft ground going out and coming back as I'm watching here is I didn't see very many deer prints in here and from the intel that Kevin told me about I kind of expected it as far as intel goes, trail cam pictures don't lie. So, and Kevin's experience about seeing all of them bucks, uh, that weighs heavy. And I'll write off the fact that I don't see any hoof prints here in the main trail because the ATV was running back and forth over the last day and a half, getting tree stands covered up in that, so. All right. We'll be back shortly. We're going to start out with a trail cam picture that was forwarded to me from James Pitzel just before I left on my hunt. Now this trail cam photo from September 21st, 2020 shows an extremely large bodied eight point buck 
along our ATV trail coming out of the Swamp Sanctuary area. It's 3.36 in the afternoon, and bow season has been open for a few days, but this guy doesn't care. He's still appearing during daylight hours. I wanted to include this in our data set because it's a great picture angle showing just how big central Wisconsin bucks can get. And as of my hunt that starts tomorrow, as far as we know, he's still in the area. Now let's get on with our current trail cam data review. Well, the beginning of November showed nocturnal activity from this doe and this nice eight-point buck. With that eight-point buck still being active at daylight and working his way off the ATV trail and through the food plot area. About two hours later, over by the turkey blind, this healthy looking coyote is working his way east on the trail away from the food plot area. By midday on November 2nd, this short rack 10 point is moving east through the food plot. The morning of November 3rd finds these two coyotes strolling around the food plot checking each other out. By 11 a.m., the turkeys have taken over the food plot. In the wee hours of November 4th at 12.54 a.m., this big eight-pointer is working his way in a northeast direction past our turkey blind which is east of the food plot by a couple hundred yards. By 8 p.m. on the 4th, this turkey egg stealing raccoon is on the prowl in the food plot. Later, around 10.30 p.m., this solo doe moves west through the food plot. Around 7.30 on the morning of the 5th, this big bodied four point is moving east through the food plot. Later on the 5th, around 7.30 p.m., this single doe moving through the food plot draws some attention from this big eight-point buck by the brush pile. In the early hours of November 7th, this lone raccoon was on a scouting mission by the Turkey Blind Trail. Now later that morning, back at the food plot around 7 a.m., this four-point buck worked his way west. Then in the early evening of the 7th, around 6.30 p.m., this bobcat was taking a stroll through the food plot heading east. The early morning hours of the 8th, had this deer moving so fast on the turkey blind trail area, we can't really tell if it's a doe or a buck. Another raccoon makes an early morning appearance on the turkey blind trail on the 9th of November. After a day and a half of only predators showing up on the trail cams, the morning through mid-afternoon on November 10th shows the return of deer and turkey activity on the trail near the turkey blind. By the morning of the 11th of November, full deer activity returns to the trail cams. This doe goes on alert while in the food plot. And for good reason, as 14 minutes later, this four-point buck has his nose to the ground hot on her trail. And late evening, around 10 p.m., has this active doe moving west through the food plot. From late morning through late afternoon on November 12th, this trail cam catches these does moving through and grazing in the food plot.
by mid-morning on the 13th, and overnight snow leaves the woods with a blanket of white as this eight-point buck walks through the north edge of the food plot. Later that evening, along the south edge of the food plot, we have this doe moving west, followed by the big eight hot on her trail. The rut is in full swing right now. By the 14th, there has been a warm-up during the day allowing the snow cover to melt. And by 7.30 p.m., the temps have dropped and the snow moisture in the air from the melting snow today has turned to a light fog. And with the fog, it's hard to tell for sure if this deer is a doe or a buck. Well, watching this video with all the big bucks has really got me fired up for my bow hunt that starts tomorrow. I can't wait to get out there. So join us on the next video as my hunt begins and watch as I try to match wits with these big Wisconsin whitetail bucks. And always remember, whether you hunt or fish, practice CCR, catch, conserve, replenish. Make sure that that resource is available for future generations. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.